the revenant Alexa Carlisle and her three adult... Phineas Whitmer, private investigator. I have an appointment with Madame Carlyle. Please wait. Mr. Whitmer is Madame Carlyle. Fantastic. Get your... Uh. That is Phineas Whitmer. The famous private investigator hired by Madame Carla this morning. I'm curious why he's here. Maybe you should do some detecting yourself, 47. Thumbs up, mate. Man. Hey, who is throwing stuff around here? Come on! Mr. Whitmer, thank God you're here. Can I take you to Madame Carlyle? Yes, please. If you'd follow me. I know I oughtn't say anything, but I'm so relieved you're here. Everything's just so strange. Preparing for Madame's funeral, and then she turns up alive. But then the awful business with her brother Zachary. And, and all this security. I'm good today, sir. I've never seen the place guarded like this, and... And I dare say I don't like it at all. This is what I mean. You have to be patted down before you see Madame Carlyle inside. Oh, I could just Hello, cry. Sir. Sorry, I just need to do a quick search if you want to get through. Just routine. Let me just pat you down here. All right, proceed. Mr. Whitmer, thank you for coming on such short notice. A great tragedy has fallen upon us, and I need a quick resolution handled with absolute discretion. Results and discretion are my speciality. Very well. I suppose you will want to start at the crime scene. In my experience, a thorough examination of a potential crime scene is half the job done. Good. Fernsby will take over from here. I am Mr. Fernsby, the butler. Madame Carlyle has asked me to assist you in any way possible. Mr. Whitmer, I understand that you've traveled from London. Would you care for some refreshments, or do you prefer to go straight to Mr. Zachary's sleeping quarters? I prefer to get started. As you wish. If you'll follow me, sir. I feel obliged to point out that current affairs surrounding Madame Carlyle are of a delicate nature. You may be familiar with the recent announcement of her death. You will probably learn that a staged funeral is scheduled to take place tomorrow. Madame's children were not informed until this morning that their mother was in fact not dead at all. So please bear with them if they seem affected Looking by the rather good. unusual Looking situation. Good. I trust I do not need to remind you 
that there will be consequences if word gets out that Madame Carlyle is still alive. I'll consider her dead when I leave. Before you inspect the crime scene, I will tell you this. The case concerns the death of Mr. Zachary, Madame Carlyle's younger brother. He was found dead in his bed this morning. The door was locked from the inside, and a suicide letter was found in his room. However, Madame Carlyle suspects foul play and will not accept that he took his own life. I've prepared some information for you, so please do come and see me when you've finished your investigation of the crime scene. This is Mr. Zachary's room, to my right. A locked room murder mystery, 47. I trust you'll get to the bottom of this. Why don't you use your camera to scan the dead body, 47? Throat markings indicate a rare, short-lived plant. Poison killed him. Spread shows time of death at around 10 o'clock last night. You do know your poisons, 47. Zachary was shopping for New Wellingtons last night. Right? Not exactly what you would expect from someone suicidal. Zachary's suicide note. Also, a sample of handwriting. It could be... ...relevant to compare to other samples to establish its authenticity. Door. It's a secret passage. This could explain how the door was locked from the inside. Hmm, a photocopy of the floor plans. Somebody's been researching the secret ins and outs of Thornbridge Manor. I believe you've done a thorough search of the crime scene, 47. Maybe it's time to see the butler. I'm curious about the information he's prepared for you. Aaron Ford Jr. calling from home.
Hello there, sir. dragging rugby washout. Hello, sir. Mr. Fernsby, I'm done with the crime scene. Did you establish a time of death? Zachary died around 10 o'clock last night. Well, that means the staff were off duty. And Madame Carlyle and her security didn't arrive until this morning. That leaves Madame's family and myself as the only persons here when he died. And before you ask, no, I do not have an alibi. I was alone in my office at the time of death. Here is the material that I prepared for you. It's a list of the possible suspects and their quarters. Hopefully that will help you keep track of your findings. Please come and see me when you've solved the case, and I will take you to Madame Carlyle. Well, I told Patrick off. I'm not interested in someone who bosses you around like that. So how does one solve a murder mystery, 47? Motive, means, and opportunity, I believe. May I suggest you ask the suspects for alibi? Or perhaps you prefer searching the manor for clues first? That is the door to Mr. Fernsby's office. Zachary's diary. This is big. He was about to confess to the world that he and Alexa murdered their older brother Montgomery 46 years ago. And apparently, Mr. Fernsby helped make the murder look like an accident. And 47, the handwriting doesn't match the suicide letter in his room, proving he didn't write it himself.
painkiller. Lethal if you use enough of them. But not the poison used to kill Zachary. Of course, Madame Carlyle doesn't know that. Are you considering to frame the butler, 47? Mr. Fernsby clearly didn't commit the murder, but I think you have enough evidence to convince Madame Carlyle he did. Maybe you should tell him you are ready to present your findings. You need to forget about that. Unless, of course, you want to do some more detecting, 47? Stick to your own kind. You mean like Chris? He treated me like shit. All he wanted to do was play his stupid video games. Never any romance. I deserve romance. How are things coming along in? Is everything ready for tomorrow? Hey, buddy. Hi there. Rebecca Carlyle, can you tell me about yesterday evening? We don't really see much of each other, my brothers and I. I suppose it takes our mother's funeral to bring us together, and even then, it's not like we sit on each other's laps. Now, let's see. Patrick, Gregory's son, disappeared straight after dinner. You know, I think he might be in some sort of trouble. Edward wanted to go as well, but Gregory convinced him to stay for a few drinks before they went off for a pint at the local at a quarter to nine. I swear Gregory enjoys Edward's discomfort over staying here. I had a conference call with my New York office at nine, so I spent three hours on my laptop in my room and went straight to bed afterwards. I don't know about Emma. She did act a bit strange. You know, I bet she was making lists for changes needing to be done once she gets her hands on Thornbridge Manor. Quite the shock she had when Mother arrived during breakfast. Is that everything, Mr. Whitmer? I do have a lot to see to. Upstairs. Why do you think he's here? I think solicitors are Mother's favorite kind of people. Tell me about Zachary. Did he act strange last night? You know, now you mention it, he was a lot more chatty than usual. I think he's here. He wanted to know about my connections in the publishing business. Apparently, a friend of his is writing a book, which strikes me as very peculiar. I didn't think he had any friends. Is there anything else you want to ask me? Anything else you feel like mentioning? I may be wrong, but I saw Mr. Fernsby, the butler, leave Zachary's room early this afternoon. And he seemed a bit startled when he saw me in the hallway. It's probably nothing. Oh, and one more thing. Please be kind to Edward. He can only take so much.
You look tanned. I bet Mother spent the last week at her site. Broken lab equipment. It looks like it was recently used, though. This is a table showing lethal dosages for the poison used to kill Z. Something is circled, 47. Female, age 65 to 79. 60 to 64 kilograms. I'd say Madame Carlyle is next in line for a poisoning. Gregory Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, you're wondering about my alibi, Mr. Detective. Well, um, I left Thornbridge around half eight for a pint with Edward. I wish I hadn't. <laughs> Quiz night at the inn. On the other hand, staying here with Zachary, my obnoxious sister, and the wife sporting another one of her headaches would have been a fate worse than death. <laughs> the, the short of it, Zachary was very much alive when we left. I stayed for the last shout, and I was back here just before midnight. Anything else you want to pry from my intricate intellect? Tell me about Zachary. Zach? Huh. 
Such a sad old sod. A bit heavy on the bottle, but who could blame him? The only company he had was his rare plants and mother, who travels more than she stays here. Honestly, I can't say which is the bigger ball. He's better off dead. Is that all? Not very thorough, are you? Anything else you'd like to tell me? Nothing, really. I'm just enjoying the show. Our perfect mother obviously fucked up, didn't she? Faking her own death. You know, she's explained nothing to us. I think she's scared to own up to her own mistake. Emma Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Surely I'm not a suspect. I need to account for everyone. Well, I spent the evening with my family, but I got an awful migraine and had to take to bed. Everyone can attest to that. I believe I went up when the boys sat down for a drink around eight o'clock. Anything else you want to know? How did you feel about Zachary? I might as well be honest. His presence was always awkward. But how do you have a meaningful conversation with a man who only cares about plants? In my opinion, Alexa bears some responsibility for how this ended. She supported his self-limiting behavior by letting him live here. Is that all? Have you noticed anything else out of the ordinary? Nothing special comes to mind, except Perhaps I did get a feeling that Zachary was depressed, not just sad. I suppose he realized that he had no one with Alexa gone. Even Alexa must feel the pangs of guilt over that one, letting him believe she was dead. Then again, guilt isn't her strong suit. Yeah, keep it real. You always led by example rather than by words and meaningless gestures. Professor Edward Carlyle, can you tell me your whereabouts for last night? Oh, yes. This Dreadful business with Zachary. I stay at the local inn. You see, I prefer not to spend the night here at Thornbridge Manor. My brother Gregory came along for a nightcap. He'll never admit it, but I think he understands that I find this whole thing upsetting and wanted to provide some comfort. I believe we went to the stag's head around half past eight. Anything else I can do to help? Can you tell me about Zachary's behavior last night? I certainly didn't expect him to commit suicide. Sure, he was upset by a mother's supposed death. We were. But he seemed more engaged than usual. Uh, you should ask Rebecca, they had a long talk. Th did you know that he hadn't left Thornbridge Manor in nearly 50 years? His plants, mother, and the staff were all the company he had. If that's all, I have a speech. Did you notice anything else out of the yard? Mary. You mean, apart from the fact that we came here to bury our mother and she shows up alive and kicking? Zachary found dead in his bed this morning? Or perhaps that the planned funeral is still taking place and I have to do the eulogy? And mother will surely have strong opinion on it afterwards. I can't breathe. Excuse me. You always led by example rather than by words and meaningless gestures. Like hugs of encouragement. Just a single spontaneous caress, what a difference that would have made. 
Right. I clearly remember when I was five. I climbed a tree and could not make my way down. I was scared and called out for help. Of all people who knew. So 41 guests will attend the funeral tomorrow. There's still a lot to see to, but we're in good time, I think. I can't deal with all this pretend funeral stuff just now. I know I have to, but Amy thinks she might be pregnant. I'm gonna be a dad. Amy is a great lass. You love her, she loves you. And now a wee one. Um, you are invading my personal space, sir. Mr. Guttenberg, hello. Yeah, listen. No, listen. I, I understand, but you need to talk to Anthony about that. Calm down. Yes, I understand. I'm sure we can come to some arrangement but you really need to talk to Anthony. He's the man with the papers. Listen, you know who I am, who my grandmother is, was, right? Just relax. It'll be fine. You'll get your returns. Don't worry. Give Anthony a call, okay? Patrick Carlyle. Can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, shit, it's that sneaky butler, isn't it? He ratted me out. Elaine, give us some privacy, would you? Don't tell Mother, OK? She's really tense these days, and the last thing I need is more hassle. I took that pretty blonde, um, Rosie, uh, for an evening stroll. I mean, how the fuck am I expected to cope for an entire weekend in this shithole? I'm bored out of my mind. If that's all, I think I'll get back to my slow death by boredom. What did you think of Zachary? <laughs> Creepy as hell. No ambition. Imagine deciding to live in a museum. You know, Father says Zachary and Alexei used to be two of a kind. He had a great future ahead of him. Then suddenly, he just gave up everything. What an idiot. Thank God Daddy chose looks and brains over pedigree when he married Mummy. I don't have to worry about the inbreeding so customary in these circles. So, is that it? Did you see anything suspicious last night? No. I reckon Zachary tops himself. I know I would have. Or perhaps Mr. Fernsby. I don't like him. He could have done it. I should get back to my... Right, right, yeah. Later. That door leads to Emma and Gregory's room. My parents would hate him. Aha! Is that those bloody kids messing around again? Keychain pendant for the greenhouse.
What's that doing in Emma and Gregory's room, I wonder? And why is the key missing? Now this is interesting, 47. A letter from Emma's mother stating that Emma is the illegitimate child of Alexa's late older brother, Montgomery. And listen to this. She claims to have witnessed Alexa and Zachary murder him. The plot thickens. You have uncovered enough evidence to tell Madame Carlyle that Emma is the murderer. Quite the detective, 47. I'm impressed. I suggest you go tell Mr. Fernsby. Unless you think there are more secrets to uncover. his motion was rejected. We all signed the bloody thing four days ago. Oh, dear God, not this again. So I got hold of the officer. He said it was finalized, but then how did it That is the door to Rebecca's room. Check his travels off. I vetted him thoroughly. He's good. rather hear your stories. See, I can't imagine what goes on behind closed doors in a house like... No, Maybe should we probably, should get uh, back to... <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. Stop sneaking around! I'm ready to present my conclusion to Madame Carlyle. Very well.
No need to panic. This is Madame Carlyle's hey. office. How are you? Please step inside. So, Mr. Whitmer, you've reached a conclusion. Take a seat. Please, go ahead. The butler, Mr. Fernsby, killed Zachary. Fernsby? Oh, you've got that wrong. He would never do such a thing. He is the most loyal man I have ever met. I found pills in his office that matches the poison that killed your brother. Furthermore, I found Zachary's notebook, half burned, in Mr. Fernsby's fireplace. It showed that Zachary intended to publish a written confession to a murder the two of you committed nearly 50 years ago. The murder of your older brother, Montgomery. That's outrageous. We did no such thing. No need to feign innocence. I know a killer when I see one, and my discretion is assured. The papers also described how Mr. Fernsby helped you stage the murder of Montgomery as an accident. I believe he killed Zachary not to be exposed as an accomplice to murder. Sweet Fernsby. You are wrong, Mr. Whitmer. He did not do it to protect himself. He did it to protect the Carlyle legacy. Mr. Fernsby, like myself, understands that sacrifices must be made to secure stability and prosperity. Mr. Whitmer, I'd appreciate it if your findings never leave this room. I understand Fernsby's actions, and there is no need for them to have more consequences than they already have. Fernsby was very fond of Zachary, and I am sure his decision will haunt him to the day he dies. About your reward, have you considered an amount? I want the file you have on Arthur Edwards. Arthur Edwards? The Constant? But that must mean you're... <sighs> I expected you'd show up. But you're not here to kill me. If you were, you would have already. The enemy of my enemy, I suppose. You can have it. You earned it. you want is in the safe. Good hunting. I need some privacy. Thank you. Hello, sir. Ah. 
Hi. Are there any gardeners outside you haven't seen before? There are a lot of them on the grounds. Somebody should document this historic moment. Mother apologizing for a major cock-up. Firsts, I believe. In my own time, Gregory. I'll... Wait till everybody is here. Right, let's get started. I want to keep this short. I know you have a lot of questions. Some I will answer now, the rest will have to wait. First, Zachary's sudden death is a great tragedy, but also a great inconvenience, as it happened just now. I'm dealing with the situation in a discreet and efficient way, and I expect your cooperation in all related matters. Second. The arranged funeral event tomorrow will take place as planned. Now, why is the bell ringing? Who rang the bell? You know very well, no one but me calls for a family gathering. The arranged funeral event tomorrow will take place as planned. No one can know that I am still alive. 
Did all the groceries arrive? I heard some of the delivery people were unhappy with the security at the gate. But the wife's safe with that. She never misses a step. Gossiping and work both. Thank you for tomorrow. Zachary found dead upstairs today. Death is everywhere. I never thought of it that way. What an exit. Old bag's got style. Show what you're made of. <laughs> Edward. <laughs> this is your chance. Oh, God. I've got to play. Mother, I want to know what is going on. Not now, Rebecca. I thought I made that clear. Yes, now. Something's really wrong. I started digging and I can see that a lot of our mandates are void. Financial decisions revoked and a freeze on Rebecca. the- Rebecca. And then you give me that token for the vault in London. But only one of two, you need to explain. The token for the bank vault is just a contingency measure. I doubt you'll need it. Could you be more cryptic? I am working very hard to figure everything out. I need you to back off and trust that I'm in control. I have contingency plans and will make sure that you get information, useful, factual information when I have it. But for now, I need time to focus. <laughs> Business as usual then. You are cold, mother. And alone. By choice. Don Yates, Alexa Carlyle here. You need to explain yourself. I demand that you return my call ASAP. Sending a junior attorney is gross negligence of your responsibilities and will have consequences for your company and you personally as well. I will make sure of that. Mark my words. Everything in order? Everything is as expected. Mother, ah, who would have thought? You fucked up, didn't you? Staging your own death? A major, grandiose cock-up, I'd say. Be quiet, Gregory. Well, it shows you're only human, after all. I never would have guessed. How's it going? I mean, it's a pretty big thing for Mother to fake her own death. Was it a security measure? Somebody out to kill her? Everything I hear is confidential. So you do know what's going on? I didn't say that. All the security officers obviously 
still feel threatened. I'll get to the bottom of it. Damn you, Edwards. Answer your bloody phone, you coward. How dare you interfere with my life like this? You're a nobody, a weasel, overreaching your competences. You are in way over your head. And I will make you pay. You can count on that. I just found this weapon lying around over there and I am a